Okay, this is Jake here with uh, JD Music again, and I'm up here at our master luthier shop in Washburn, Missouri, called Crazy Mule. And this is our master luthier here, Boyd Stogdale. No relation. Yeah, never was. Yeah, never was. <laughs> at least not by choice. <laughs> and uh, what we're doing, um, we're going to show you all how to put on one of these new pit guards. Uh, you can see the old one we had here was just a plain Martin style and I acquired one of these beauties here so uh, we're just gonna walk you through the process step by step and what he was doing when I caught him on the camera you always want to make sure the pit guard you're replacing is gonna fit and cover the footprint of the old one so we were just making sure of that before we uh, proceeded to rip the old one off so looks like we'll be good to go and uh, We'll get back to you here in just a second. Okay, so now what I've done here uh, is some people use different method of, of actually getting this pit guard loose to make it turn loose. The adhesive on it is, is uh, heat sensitive. So what you can do is you can heat it up two or three different ways. Some people use a, a hair dryer or a little, uh, like a, a little heat blow gun of sorts and I, I've, I've used them both but my preferred method is just a regular old clothes iron. Uh, you have to be a little more diligent about it but you can actually direct the heat more to the area that you need it. With a big blow dryer you can heat surfaces all over. With an iron you can actually just heat the pit guard. And you never want to touch the pit guard. You never want to get it close, but I just turn the thing up on high, get it hot, where it'll fry that spit, <laughs> uh, heat your coffee, whatever. Uh, what you want to do is you want to just get this and hold it directly above the pit guard without touching it. You just want to get some heat on there. And it normally doesn't take a whole lot. And we always start with this front edge up here. Yeah, That's I where, usually yeah, start so. with this front corner, right, this front corner right here, the, the very point. The tip. Yeah. It's easier to, normally it's easier to get loose. Here's another thing that you can do if you're a little worried about it. Doesn't hurt a thing. Sometimes it's actually easier. Take a couple of pieces of wood. Lay on the guitar. That way when you put your iron on there, you won't contact the wood and it's about the right height, you know, about a quarter of an inch or so up off of it. And it'll keep you from actually making contact with anything other than the wood and it, it won't get hot enough to cause any damage. Uh, just and there's, yeah, the melting point of that glue or adhesive is typically quite a bit lower than the blister point of your finish. Right. So no matter which method you use, you want to be sure to keep, you know, keep an eye on, you know, keep feeling, you know, take the iron off, feel it, uh, and feel the, the wood and the finish around it. You don't want to get, to get too hot. That's the one thing you want to be careful of. Um, you can pretty safely do this as long as you just take it little by little and Keep checking and be careful not to blister your finish. Yeah, I think the blister on this is like uh, almost 300 degrees. It starts to get soft at around 250. Uh, <clears throat> and usually an iron doesn't get much over about 220. Yeah. So, you know, an iron will get hot enough to boil water, but it won't get if you're not touching it directly to something, it doesn't necessarily get hot enough to burn the finish. But you've got to be careful because some of the plastic finishes, it will melt through. Yeah, poly finishes and yeah, stuff poly like that. Yeah, poly finish, yeah, yeah, you can just really <coughs> mess things up in a hurry if you're not careful. So you just want to get it warm. And then the rocket science comes into play. And that's where you Get a hold of it, you can see it start to peel loose there. 
you don't want to pull straight up. You kind you of pull out. Pull, you want to you want to pull evenly as you work this off. And, you, we'll and probably, if you're if you're using a hair dryer or a heat gun method like I do, as I'm doing that, I'm heating this joint here yeah, as can, I go. You can heat it. That makes it a little easier. The biggest thing is you just don't want to get it so hot. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, just take it little by little and you'll be fine. You just take your time. The whole thing is not to get in a rush and be diligent about everything that you do. Wasn't he a gangster? Yeah, right? he yeah. was a gangster. John Diligent. Yeah, Doc John Diligent. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, be like John Diligent. Yes. You just got to pay attention. Hey, look, see that dog? No. Oh, wow, a blue car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, you're not going to be able to save this pick guard. Once you heat it, it curls like a potato chip. Yeah, especially these uh, thin these ones thin like this. Yeah. Sometimes you can save the thick ones like the one we're putting on it, but uh, if they're put on properly in the first place, which you can see this one is, they're very, very attached to that guitar. <laughs> you can even hear the uh, the adhesive kind of yeah, crackling loose as we're as he's peeling on it. They're attached just like I am to my fingers. <laughs> I'm kind of fond of them. biggest thing is just to not get in any rush take your time and just make sure that you get things heated up working on instruments like this is like uh, 99% pure just tedious boredom and 1% sheer terror. Yeah. <laughs> that, that when you hear that cracker that's not supposed to be there. One yeah, thing you can you, see my distress line here. This is my personal guitar. One thing you have <laughs> to be really careful of as you're doing this is you wash the wood grain so that you actually don't tear any wood loose. Yeah. Because this is possible that you can pull grain loose and pull it out. Now, that doesn't mean it's and, not fixable. Yeah, and it always happens naturally. If you see those old guitars where the pit guards have curled up like a potato chip. And they've shrunk. A yeah. lot of times it's cracked the grain. So, um, yeah, that's just something to be careful of. So there we go. Perfect removal, no damage done. We'll get back to you in just a second. Old pick guard. Yeah. Goes to trash. Yeah, goes to trash. All right, so we'll show you how to put the new one on here in a minute. It's a lot simpler than taking the old one off. Okay, uh, this guitar, the the uh, uh, adhesive that was on it, this had all pulled loose with the pick guard itself. You can see here it's still you know, the adhesive is still stuck to the back of the pick guard. <coughs> if you feel the wood, the wood is you want to make, yeah, it's completely dry and clean. There's no residue left on it anywhere. If there's any residue, the best thing to do, depending on the finish that you have, you have to be careful. Alcohol will cause it, you can rub the finish right off. Which under the pick guard isn't a bad thing necessarily. No, no. If, if it's a guitar that has a poly finish on it, you can use alcohol and clean it up easily. If it's a lacquer finish or something like that, you need to, a spirit finish of some kind, you really need to be careful. About the edge. About yeah. the edge out here cleaning it. Yeah, you can also take, if you have trouble with getting pick guards to stick, you can take some sandpaper and kind of rough it up so it'll have better yeah. surface area to grab. But basically you just want to make sure it's clean. If the old one you take off leaves a clean surface like this one did, uh, we're good to go. Yeah. It's all in the way you get it heated and get it pulled loose uh, for the most part. Yeah. But a lot of times you'll leave something, just take your time, get it clean, 
and and then uh, because anything you leave underneath of it could show through the pit guard. Yeah, depending on uh, how light or dark it is. Yeah, or how thin or thick the pit guard is also. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line this up because this pickup is slightly different size than the footprint that it's left. Pit guard, yeah. Uh, or, yeah, what did I say? Pickup. Oh, the pickup? Yeah, you're thinking that your Ford I'm needs new tires. tires. Yeah. It does need new tires. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I try to get it where it covers pretty good. The radius around the sound hole is not exactly the same. So uh, these are all cut. To, sometimes you have to work an edge down a little or something, but this one here is going to be able to fit right on there uh, whenever I get it. Yeah, sometimes that uh, they'll typically, you have to play with it to see, but sometimes the, the radius of the pit guard will match up differently. You see these rings in the rosette. You know, sometimes it'll cover the whole rosette. Sometimes the radius will go to, uh, you know, one of the rings before it matches up like it's supposed to. Yeah, so. it might be slid out where you have this much. You right. can see right yeah. here, you know, or even this much. Yeah, some the of them. The thing is, and it may be slid all the way up where it covers, but it's the idea is to get the, the radius of this uh, even around here yeah. and get it, the, get it a good distance uh, where it just covers the footprint, the old... You can see it's white. It's a lighter color where the old pit guard was because the wood's naturally darkened outside of that. So you just kind of got to get it up and then uh, get you a couple of marks on it. To yeah, because whenever you peel that back to stick it, it's going to stick wherever you stick it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's... you want to make sure to do this part very carefully. Otherwise, you'll be either stuck removing the whole thing and doing it over or, or with a crooked pit guard. And some people just don't care, you know. It's yeah, I don't care. Yeah, there's one up How's on the wall. Look, Jake? What do you think? Looks fine to me. Which you can tell from the uh, aesthetics of my guitar. I'm not too concerned about uh, minute detail, but I use that a, looks pretty good. I use a pencil, and I just mark this point. And I mark this area right here. Sorry for all the noise over there. That's my mom banging around on the cash register. She's pretending she has money. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what we've done, we've got everything marked out. We've made sure the surface is all prepped and ready. Uh, so normally what I do when I put one of these on is I get a hold of the adhesive backing somewhere. Maybe this one won't come off. <laughs> This is the hardest part. Yeah, this Peeling is that sticker off. <laughs> getting that sticky off of there. Yeah. Okay, now I, I normally peel it off just like that. And then I'll get a, make me a little spot somewhere back over here where I can just get a finger underneath of it to get a hold of it without touching the pit guard. So I've just got it, you know, just pinched in there like that. And then I'll take and line up the points where I've made these marks right here and right here. And I know about The silence there was because of the concentration. Yeah. Then you take your wax paper and you uh, spread it all out. <clears throat> Actually, you want to start in an area 
And you don't want to try to work anything up because this thing could have bubbles under it. So you want to work everything kind of in a common direction. Yeah, from the inside out, basically. Yeah. Now what you have to do, this is probably all we'll have to do to this one. Uh, what you have to do sometimes, i found, is, uh, and not necessarily with these th thick pick guards, but in replacing Martin pick guards, uh, similar to like what's on the wall over there. That one that I'm showing you here, if I film in, you can see the edges curling up on it like a potato chip. Actually, if I get on closer in, you can actually see, see the crack in the wood there. That's from what we were talking about earlier. That's the edge of that's peeled up, started to crack the wood. That happened naturally. So we'll have to fix that crack before repla replacing the pit guard. But you can even see the grain of the wood through the pit guard. So when you peel that one off, the wood has actually changed shape under there. It's no longer flat. And when I, in the past, when I've had to replace pit guards on guitars of that nature, sometimes you have to heat the new pit guard just a little bit when you work it in so it, it makes a good contact. But if everything's flat and square, like this one is, uh, that's pretty much a finished job there. One of the things you can do at the last is to take a, a soft, like a flannel, a soft flannel cloth or something and just kind of work this pit guard. Just make sure that everything is stuck on it. Mm -hmm. And that kind of cleans it up and gets any adhesive residue left on it that you might have gotten on there. Maybe you're like me, and while you're putting it on there, you got your mouth open and you slobber on it, and that kind of gets the slobber off of it. Okay, so there's the finished product. You can see it can take a... Uh, kind of a tired looking old guitar and really really make it stand out. The reason you can get all different colors of these uh, the reason I chose the real reddish one is because this is a redneck guitar it's kind of my signature model and it matches the neck nicely see that? So, <laughs> uh, and this is made uh, this is one of those guitars made by the Williams Custom Shop like the if any of you have seen the video on the TR model, which I actually have in the case over here, that brown case, um, it's the same guy that makes it. And actually, the uh, Boyd, Dad Boyd Stogdale Luthier here, he's he's the guy who kind of designed the the unique bracing system that's in this to a point. And you know, this 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 model was actually his concept, the redneck. So. Anyway, uh, that's that. Uh, should uh, have your pit guard on and and uh, and your guitar looking snazzy now. So, if you all have any questions or uh, need to order one of these, we do try to keep uh, this style of pit guard in stock. We've got a, a custom uh, maker who makes beautiful pit guards. So. Uh, um, if you want to place an order for one of these and you've watched the video and you think you want to try your hand at it, just let us know. All right, we'll catch you all next time. Any final words? Keep on picking, man. Don't do it. It's, he, he doesn't know. Don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. It's a trick. Break stuff. I yeah. need to work. Yeah, break stuff. I need to work. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, we'll see you, folks.